If there is a school that represents college football more than any other, it's Penn State, a school that's located in a small town right smack down in the middle of Pennsylvania. The program is the lifeblood of the city. Without Penn State football, it just wouldn't be the same. But this program went through a serious stretch, one that most programs just don't go through. As we come on the air, former Penn State coach Jerry Sandusky has been sentenced to prison for the rest of his life. This situation set the program back, and it was one of the darkest moments in the history of sports. Now I'm not going to dive into the politics of it, but this situation almost killed Penn State football. They were set back big time, and had to face an uphill climb that no other school has faced before. So today I will tell you a quick story about Penn State football, and how this program got itself back onto the top of college football. So let's get into it. Let's backtrack to the 1950s. Joe Paterno just graduated college at Brown and was going to attend Boston University's law school. But Joe Pa was offered a job to become an assistant coach at Penn State with their football team under coach Charles Ingle, better known as Rip Ingle, who was Joe's football coach at Brown. When Joe took the job, his dad was dumbfounded because Joe spent all that hard work in school and then he took a low paying coaching job but we all know that was a pretty good idea. Coach Ingle knew Joe would become a good coach since he was a quarterback at Brown, and Rip went on to coach the Lions from 1950 through 1965. And Joe was an assistant coach there for all those years, and he was even promoted to the associate head coach. But when Rip retired in 1966, Joe was promoted to head coach and stayed in that position all the way up until 2011. Joe Pa was going to spend 46 seasons as the head coach of the Nittany Lions, which goes down as the longest for any head coach ever in the sport. And don't forget, he was there for 16 seasons before he was the head coach, making his tenure at Penn State 62 total years. Yes, you heard that right. While he was at Penn State, the Nittany Lions played independent from 1966 through 1992, and then they joined the Big Ten in 1993. Most people even forget, he also served as Penn State's athletic director from 1980 through 1982. Joe was considered the holy grail of college football, a living legend. His final record as Penn State's head coach was 409, 136, and 3, and winning two national championships in 1982 and 1986, in his 46 seasons, they only had five losing seasons, and four of those came in the early 2000s. The program appeared in 37 bowl games, and Joe has the most wins among any head coach in FBS football and college sports. Coach Paterno prided his players to succeed not only on the field but in the classroom. Penn State football players were killing it at both. Their graduation rates were at 78%, which was way above the 67% Division I average, and were second only to Northwestern in the Big Ten in 2008. Now Joe had to turn down some NFL jobs while he was at Penn State. The New England Patriots and the in-state team the Pittsburgh Steelers are two notable teams that had offered him jobs, and in 2007 he was inducted to the College Football Hall of Fame. There is so much that Joe did for this university that it's hard to imagine the situation I'm going to get into happened. And before I start, I don't know all the details, I stand on no one's side, but earlier this summer I watched a Joe Paterno movie about this time period on HBO, and it was very well done, and I suggest any of you to watch it. It didn't come across as biased, and it was fascinating filmmaking. But I have to talk about this situation if you want to understand the importance of the future. I'm going to make it brief, and I'm not going to cover everything, but I have to make some points. Like I said, Joe is regarded as the saint of college football, for all the things he did off the field in the community, how much his players regarded him as a father figure, and how the community in a whole looks at him, you just can't imagine something horrible ever coming out of there. But in November of 2011, a story broke about former assistant coach Jerry Sandusky, and how he was physically assaulting kids and molesting them during a youth football camp at Penn State. This sent shockwaves around college football, and as a result, Joe Paterno was the person everyone pointed fingers at. Now in that movie, you learn much more about the entire situation, but Joe had to take the blame and sadly, his great name was ruined because of this. And Joe Paterno was fired in November of 2011. And all of the team's wins from 1998 through 2011 were vacated. Joe's statue outside of Beaver Stadium was taken down, but that's not the worst of it. In 2012, the NCAA gave them five years probation, and a four-year postseason ban, and a $60 million fine. And finally, a loss of a total of 40 scholarships from 2013 to 2017. During the same period, Penn State was limited to 65 total scholarships. Only two more than a Division I FCS school is allowed. Now the NCAA rescinded much of the sanctions against Penn State. On September 24th of 2013, the NCAA announced that Penn State scholarships would gradually be restored until the total amount of scholarships reaches the normal 85 limit, the first year after Penn State's postseason ban. A year later, on September 8th of 2013, 14, the NCAA announced that Penn State would be eligible for the 2014 postseason and that all scholarships will be restored in 2015. And several months later, on January 16th of 2015, the NCAA reinstated Joe Paterno and Tom Bradley's wins. Now speaking of Tom Bradley, he was the defensive coordinator under Joe, and he took over the team when Joe had to step down. Now Penn State was 8-1 when Tom took over, and that's what makes this situation worse is because Penn State had a pretty good team that year that had nothing to do with these allegations. 
but they lost focus throughout the whole mess and ended the season 1-3. After Joe stepped down in November, only two months later he died January 22nd of 2012. Just like Bear Bryant, the other legend of the sport died right after he quit coaching, and that just shows he was meant to do this in life. But Penn State had to find some solutions. They decided to not hire Tom as their full-time head coach, and had to do a coaching search. Even though they had all these issues due to the NCAA and the program was a mess, Bill O'Brien took a chance on this storied program. Bill O'Brien was excited about the future of Penn State football. He could implement his knowledge of being the offensive coordinator for the Patriots and apply it to the team. Entering his first year in 2012, the Nittany Lions and Bill did not have much expectations. Because of everything going on, people thought they might not even win a game. And even though they started out 0-2, they finished the year 8-2 and it shocked the entire football world. Bill won the Coach of the Year award in the Big Ten and even won the Coach of the Year award by ESPN, and he won the Bear Bryant award for the Coach of the Year. The 2013 season they went 7-6, winning their first two games, but they would win every other game for the remaining of the season. But after the season, the Houston Texans had hired Bill O'Brien to become their next head coach, and Penn State once again was looking for a new coach. But they decided to look at a Pennsylvania native and coach of Vanderbilt, James Franklin. James Franklin was the head coach of Vanderbilt for three years, and he went 9-4 and back-to-back -back seasons there. And that's at Vanderbilt. It's hard to win there, and James did that. So this guy can coach. And I recently read a candid coaching voting saying he was one of the most overrated coaches in the country, and I strongly disagree. Now in James's first two years there, they went 7-6 and back-to-back. But in 2016, they went off, led by running back Saquon Barkley, that James Franklin got to come to Penn State, and speaking of guys he got to come there, quarterback Trace McSorley. Trace was signed to go to Vanderbilt, but when James Franklin left, Trace left to come play at Penn State with him. In the 2016 season, Penn State finished 11-3, making the Rose Bowl but losing in a shootout to USC. But this was a big accomplishment, and it showed that Penn State football was here to stay once again. Now in 2017, Penn State finished 11-2 while winning the Fiesta Bowl versus Washington. And the two games they lost that year were by a combined 4 points. So if the ball flipped their way a couple times, they could have gone undefeated and competed in the college football playoff. Now James Franklin has done wonders for this program, and they seem to be back on their feet. And as a college football fan, them being good is great for the sport. Going into this year, Penn State is ranked number 10 in the preseason AP poll, and they should be very competitive this year. Even though there were some scares James Franklin might have left for another school as the season ended, he is back and Penn State football is back to where they once were. I can't wait to see how they do because Penn State is good for college football. Thanks for watching.